Hello, 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 and welcome back to some room, 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 rooms, factories. I got quite a bit of stuff in here and on the fatty. So, oh my gosh, I've been doing a lot of stuff lately, and the amount of stuff that I'm doing isn't over yet. <laughs> so, originally, it was just, hey, I'm going out for a week for a trip, so I need to record a about 20 or so extra videos. Which, you know, in and of itself, that's quite something to be done. <laughs> but you know what? I, you know, budgeted my time and that worked out well enough. And then it's, oh, hey, by the way, <laughs> like, well, first, record a bunch of extra videos. Also, don't forget to pack. Reasonable. Oh, also, do a bunch of uh, this paperwork stuff for a thing. I don't even know what it's for, but it's for a thing and I have to do a bunch of paperwork for something. All of a sudden. It's like, why? <laughs> and I'm still waiting for a proper answer on the why for that. So I'm just going to keep waiting. And so, I got the paperwork, like, filled out, I hope. <laughs> so I have to go downtown tomorrow and, you know, buzz public transit, which, it's not like it's hard to do or anything, it's just kind of annoying to do, especially since I still got a pack and stuff. Also, wanted to clean more, didn't get enough cleaning done, really wanted to get more of that, but... Like I said, there was so much to be done. And plus, part of the packing is, you know, making sure I have enough stuff so I don't just get bored, because I kind of get bored a bit too easily. It's like, okay, bring the handheld computer and, you know, fill up an external hard drive with a whole bunch of various shows, animes, ponies, etc. So I have stuff to watch while I'm out of town. Because, hey, no internet! So I could potentially record more videos, theoretically. I guess I should bring along the microphone just in case I do want to record some stuff. Yeah, do I also bring along the keyboard in case I want to write stuff? Probably not, I don't think so. If I really want to write stuff, I can always just use my phone to write stuff. It's not as good as a keyboard, but also it's a heck of a lot smaller than a keyboard. And I'll feel really bad for bringing a keyboard if I don't do a lot of writing. And I doubt I'll do much writing. So. I have the recordings all set, so basically I record Room Factory here now, and then I go and record Danganronpa right afterwards, and then the only other recording that I have to do before I leave is one more Room Factory, like, the morning of the day that I leave. So if I wake up and record it, I'll have a few hours for it to upload before I have to go. Also, is there supposed to uh, join in for this recording sooner or later? And I wanted to chat with her about like what kind of stuff I should bring along here because every time I go on a trip, I'm always like, okay, what do I bring? Clothes? I guess like phone char- like phone, phone charger. That sort of stuff. <laughs> So basically, so today, I got lots of groceries, because Chandra's going to be staying over while I'm out of town. So y'all better not uh, try to do anything, because you'll have Chandra to deal with. 
Okay, got some groceries, got my paperwork all printed out, so tomorrow I'm going to be heading downtown, submitting the paperwork, finalizing it there while I'm there. Hopefully I finalize it there while I'm there. And I really hope everything goes well there. And then I'm going to just come back home and just, I don't know, keep making sure that these pony episodes I'm downloading are actually downloading. Because some of these... I don't know, it's weird. It's Sometimes it works and it seems like my VPN just turns off the internet like every, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, so I have to close close the torrent, turn off the VPN, turn it back on, and then go, and it's like, oh, now I work. It's like, yeah, gee, thanks. Thanks for trying, friend. See, I feel like today it's mostly just record these videos. Is the only thing that I have recorded and uploaded these videos is the only thing that I really have to do left for tonight. And tomorrow is when I'll do the bulk of the actual packing. And when that gets all well and good. And then after I get all that done, I don't know, figure out some more things. I'm sure I'll be able to figure out something. I started watching My Little Pony Gen 5 recently. I saw the movie and I saw like the first few episodes of the show. And like the movie is a really good and nice standalone movie, like on its own accord. The show itself, it really wants you to have seen. Okay, no, wait. Like, you could totally watch the show without having seen the movie, and I don't think that would necessarily spoil anything too outward. At least from the first few episodes that I've seen. The big issue about it is, of course, you know... <laughs> the big... Uh, overall ending of the movie, which is basically, yeah, protagonists win. Spoiler alert. <laughs> you know, just in case you weren't aware that that would be the way of... I mean, not, yeah, like, it's a children's movie. It's made for people who authentically like ponies as opposed to people who liked the pony fandom. Like... Because they can't reuse any of the same old characters. They can't just put in Derpy, but they can put in another character who is also Derpy. You know. Who is rather ditzy in her own ways. And like... Just like... It's like a stallion who has like Derpy's colors and it's weird. Or like, he's like an earth pony. And apparently Gen 5 is supposed to have a main 6, but, <laughs> and this is something I was told, flat out. It also has a main 6, but one member of the main 6 doesn't actually appear in the movie, and doesn't appear until, like, a few episodes into the show. And they're all like, yeah, she was always here. I wonder if fans of Gen 4 started watching Gen 5, they're like, what do you mean there's no main 6? There should be 6. And it's like, 
visual show ended with like seven at least. <laughs> so that the movie is like 3D and like the show is like 2D. It is kind of weird to watch the movie and then like, oh, this is how the show's gonna be. It's like, no. Like, just to look at the show itself, it looks like a another cheap children's show, and frankly, it seems like it basically is just another cheap children's show. The plot's, for the most part, rather simplistic, basic. You could find them in, like, tea time to go, whatever. But, I mean, it's still ponies, right? Like, they still try to hold true a little bit to the original ponies thing, so it's like... How much do you like to just watch the ponies, and how much do you want to just... No. <laughs> Whatever. Also, the music is really good still. A lot of nice songs. I believe the movie had seven songs, so that's cool. Really good for, uh, Beat Saber. <laughs> Which, also, before I leave, I'm gonna have to, uh, use my... Yeah, use Beat Saber again. Just for the sake of... Yeah, maybe downloading a few more songs onto it, who knows. And I was told that this time I'm going and visiting the property, I should be able to use the, like, big garage for VR, so that would be nice. Instead of, you know, VRing in the living room or something. Especially if people are trying to sleep. No one's trying to sleep in the garage, I think. Maybe? I don't know. We're gonna have a lot of people. So who really knows where everyone's going to be trying to sleep? Before we go, like I said, I have to submit this paperwork, that's the most important part, and then I also have to pack. And it's like, oh, well, if you have something important to do, why don't you do it right now? Because I cannot submit the paperwork right now, because the office is closed. Yeah, that's just it. The office is closed. Like, I can't. There's no, like, drop-off box or whatever. I have to be there during office hours because one of the things has to be signed like in front of the person there and whatever. So bring the paperwork, bring a pen, <laughs> and just like, hey, here's stuff. Also, while I was getting stuff printed out, I also printed off the uh, Discord deck that I had made on uh, on the sticker paper that I bought. Seems to work well enough, although the Moxfield uh, print proxies thing prints the proxies slightly smaller than proper magic cards, but I mean, they are still, like, obviously proxies anyway. It would just be nice if they were proper size. So it wouldn't be either- so the- yeah, just so they wouldn't really be bleed, but it's like, whatever, what are you gonna do? It's still there. So stick the cards onto your actual cards and have it be fine, at least this way. It's a lot easier to read what the cards do. So it all good. I'm sure I'm gonna have a big talk with Chandra about all the stuff I'm bringing in. Fortunately, at the property there is a laundry machine, so I don't have to bring, you know, ten days worth of clothing. I can bring, like, three or four outfits. When am I actually gonna be gone? Let's see. I think it is. I think 11? 
or 12th. I don't know actually exactly which day I'm getting back on. So it's like, well, I think I recorded enough episodes of uh, Tevi to cover the entire time that I'll be gone. And it's just like, well, I mean, if we get back the next day after, that could Rawr. maybe be an issue. Oh, hello. This is some like power to upload for that. I guess I should check to make sure I'm actually uh, streaming this to you. What do you think, Azur? Can you see the runes? Rar. You should be able to. Yes. Cool. Yeah, I was just talking about how uh, <laughs> I have so much stuff to do this week for no particular reason. Just everything just kind of bundled in together this week where every day i have to be busy okay not every day uh sunday monday tuesday wednesday and thursday i have to be busy So, Zara, can you think of anything uh, extra special or... So, can you think of stuff that I should try to remember to pack for my trip? Where I'll be, you know, away from the internet for... <laughs> about oh, things ten... that you should take with you? Yeah, so like, clothes, toiletries, I'm bringing a bunch of books, uh, handheld computer, switch, phone, charging cables for all of those, plug-in cables for the computer to plug into the TV there. Uh, a selection of your favorite snacks? Um, I guess oh, I could bring and, some crackers. And make sure, make sure, very sure that you bring some spices with you. I recommend cinnamon. No, they don't want me to bring cinnamon down. That's why Sean just coming over to uh, look after cinnamon. Ah, lucky cinnamon. He's gonna get to spend some time with his uh, favorite girl outside the family. <laughs> with Auntie Chandra. Mm -hmm. Lucky kitty. Um. I mean, you're taking your handheld computer, so you don't need to worry. Like, so obviously, you know, you know what shows and games you can bring with you that don't need to be online. Yeah, download some games off of Steam onto the handheld. Uh, make, basically, make sure... all of the animes that we've been watching have been on the external hard drive. Yeah. So I can bring that. So what you're saying to make sure? Um. I ha I had thoughts, but I I don't want to say them now. Not while you're uh, you're recording. Ah, uh, yeah. Even though it's going to be a joke, it, it's not worth it to make you have to edit your video. Yeah, especially since like. I'm kind of running, like, up against the deadline here, just a little oh. bit for this. Mm -hmm. so I didn't want to put I off this video so late, but I also wanted to record with you. Right? Don't make me hit the button, Azura. Don't threaten me with a good time. You don't even know what the button is. I assume the disconnect button. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah it's uh, oh. very similar to uh, this one. Bro, bro. Also, Simon found the snacks I bought for him. 
I don't think you can hear it because the microphone probably tracks as dead noise. But it's in like a plastic container with like, you know, the plastic around it to keep it sealed. <laughs> and he's trying to rip apart the plastic to get at the treats. I mean, can you blame him? Kitty wants his Tritos. Okay, wait, hold on. Boop. Boop. Boop, boop, should boop. Don't you had better not to give you all of these while I'm away. For what? Trying to cinnamon. Don't you had Don't you had better not give him all of these treats while I'm away. Oh, by the way, I learned something today that I know is gonna be absolutely devastating to you. Um yeah, the Minecraft server uh, that we were playing in, um, yeah, they they did have to do a reset. Oh, well, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if if you want, I can you know get a I can get the uh, a copy of the world so that we can you know like just keep our base but like private between us. I mean, I think that, that would be something really cool to, like, show off together at some point. Sure. Do a little let's play of, like, hey, here's some Minecraft we did together at some point. Like, I'd love to go to that stone block world we did, the first one, and just show off, like, yeah, this was, like, Azura's sections. Like, here's why I try to make it, like, a little, not quite a stairway, a little slope in the floor. <laughs> Salmon. Treats are back here. <gasps> Treatsies. Treatos. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Plus, we still have some more of that anime to watch together. We want to try to finish off that. Plus, I really do want you to watch that pony movie. <laughs> I went inside, and it's pretty good. Claire, I'll Please. just say this. I've already seen enough of it, like, of clips of it, Please. to not really need to see the whole movie. Okay? You've already seen clips of it? Yes. Someone showing you clips of the pony movie? Yes. I, I don't know if you've known this, but it's been out for like, what, three years now, right? At least? Maybe yeah, more? Yeah, something like that, probably. Probably more. I don't know. I have seen enough clips of it to know the only parts of it that I would actually care about, and enough to know the general plot to know what happens. Yeah, it's uh, Equestria, uh, Equestria, but Cozy Glow 1. Equestria, but segregation and racism. So Equestria. Good point. It's like, you might not like it, but segregation and racism are kind of big uh, plot elements for Equestrian society. I mean, it has a, it had a lot to do with their history, sure. But I mean... Even watching through, like, Gen 4, like... Take a drink every time someone is racist. Like...
makes me think, though, that in that Cards Against Pony thing, like, there's a couple of cards that, you know, like, suggest, oh, it's, like, the, the, the donkey underclass or whatever, blah, 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 and mm -hmm. yet, like, there's only, like, three episodes in which, you know, donkeys are, like, present, and they are treated quite well. I mean, I still remember one point where Twilight's like, oh, you're being stubborn as a mule. Oh, no offense. And there's just a mule right there next to her. <laughs> See, I mean, you had your treats. So. But Mama, I want more treats. He's sniffing around my chicken. But oh, Mama, I want the chicken. I want the chimkins. He didn't accept the chicken that I offered him earlier. Oh. Did it come off of your plate that time too? Yeah, well, I wasn't eating off of a plate because I just had some cooked chicken. And Simon often likes to smell the food that I'm eating, you know, just to make sure that uh. it smells alright. There's no poison in it or anything. And he wanted to eat some uh, of the chicken, so I gave him a little piece, and he licked it a whole lot, and then just left it behind. <laughs> hey, Cinnamon. Show us your fangs! I'm glad I'm not recording on, you know, the desktop right now, or else I wouldn't be able to see the screen. So, as usual, for whenever I have Chandra coming over to look after Cinnamon, I offered to buy her some groceries. Because, you know, nice thing to do. She's going to be here for a while. I want to make sure she has something nice to eat. Or, you know, a couple of meals. Uh, kind of ordered a bit too much. Or, you know, got bought too much, whatever. And kind of couldn't fit everything in my freezer, because my freezer was already pretty full. So I have some chicken and vegetables just sitting in my slow cooker. <laughs> Because that was the only way to make everything fit, was to literally take some stuff out. It's like, well, I'm not going to eat all of this chicken and all of these vegetables right now. But if I cook them up overnight, maybe, I'll just eat them all tomorrow. Tomorrow. And then Chandra's all... Oh! Oh, good. I'll come over, like, the day before the trip, and I'll buy us some pizza. And it's like... We have so much food, but also pizza is just good. Plus, hopefully, I'll be able to convince Chandra to play some Party Box. I haven't told her about it yet, but... <laughs> oh, that reminds me, I wanted to uh, try downloading that one YouTube video. You know, the one that tells you everything you need to know to play Magic the Gathering. Uh -huh. I want to show my brother that video. <laughs> See what he thinks about it. He loves overly complicated games. It's actually kind of funny, he used to, like, make up games and try to get our mom to play them with him. But they were just too overly complicated for, for her. Once I got Chase interested in playing Magic, however, that seems to be just the right level of complexity for him. <laughs> uh. 
Uh, but yeah, so let's see, bringing... I think I'll pack a few commander decks. I don't know, bring the Grimoire, that's like eight decks right there. I printed out this here Discord deck, just need to, you know, finish cutting it out, sticking the proxies onto cards, and then sleeping it all up. I didn't even realize I had uh, evolution sleeves. I just opened up my sleeve drawer and there they were. Hey Simon, did you know I had evolution sleeves? Smell them. Okay. Put the kitty on the lap. <laughs> so, what are you, you going to do with yourself for a whole week while you won't have me around? Oh, I don't know. I guess I'll probably just, you know, find myself another girlfriend, I guess. Who knows? I might not even remember you by the time you get back. I'm joking. Who do you think you are? Cinnamon? No. Then who are you? Remember. I'm a slime. Who are you, slimy man? Slender slime. Meow. So there is. I've been reading another manga. In fact, I've, I honestly, I've just been reading lots of manga of uh, mostly along the lines of. Like, similar to, like, the whole solo leveling concept one, um, where it's just like, oh, it's basically video game rules, yeah. except in real life or whatever, just with whatever yes. circumstance is going on. But then also I've been reading, you know, some other ones where, uh, you know, it's just, again, they're just straight up playing a video game. No game, no life. First of all, I just have to say here... Well, Wait, no game of life. That... No. no. No game, no life is not quite that. But anyways. Uh, I mean, they were playing a video game in that. If by yeah, yeah. they were playing a video game, you mean that was a couple of episodes within the game. Sorry, within the anime, yes. Within the game, yes. Anyways. I think it opens up on a video game. Yes, you were saying. What did you find? Um, first of all... Okay, so you know how... Well, first of all, it's just weird how... Um, how to put this? Apparently, it's a uh, fairly common... Like, it's... I, I, wouldn't, I don't know if I would actually even could say it's a common genre, but apparently it's common enough that I've now, you know, been watching one series with you and have read at least two other manga where ultimately the main character is a necromancer. Yeah, necromancy is in right now. Yeah, it's, it's weird. I, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't get why that one is, is just done so much and made to in every case, it's always mattered to be, oh, it's super unique, and it's super OP. And it's just, and that seems to be with or without, you know, the character also having other things that make them 
that just enhance it and make it even more OP. It's just that. However, there's one particular one that I'm reading currently, uh, and this is one where it's kind of more in the style of Bofuri. You know, literally, they're just playing, you know, a VR game. And playing it in an unconventional way. Uh, in this case, by this particular one, was it uh, basically you have ten equipable skills? Like you start off, you pick up, you know, ten skills from a list or whatever that you can like level up through using them, etc. And as you, like, you increase, you know, the, the levels of your skills, you can get new ones, but you can only equip ten at a time. Um, okay, yeah, sure. Which, you know, is an interesting one, and, it, you know, like, the, apparently, like, the in-universe, you know, explanation of this is that doing it that way, uh, the intent is that every player will have their own unique gameplay and, like, game style experience. Which, you know what? Makes sense to me. Everyone just has their own customized way of playing. This particular wow. character, the main character, is basically talked into playing the game by both their sister and also their friend, you know, into just playing the game. And... They're not really much into video games, and they also don't want to just be doing the same thing as, you know, you know, as, like, Everyone the people else. they're playing with. So they think, oh, you know, I'm just going to kind of go more support character, which, you know what, fair enough. They explicitly choose their starting skills to be the least picked skills out of all the ones in the game. Turns out they're actually really OP when used together, and somehow nobody has ever noticed that. Actually, n not even. Like, the general summary of the series suggests that that might eventually be the case. Um, but ultimately, it, like, they are, like, consistently kind of laughed at and mocked by, like, their friends... To the, like, early on, it's just like, wow, nobody picks that skill. It's just like, yeah, I mean, there's that skill, that you pick that skill, but there's this other skill that does the same thing, but better. Etc. It's, and admittedly, it's like me have... playing CDH with a colorless deck. And, uh... And admittedly, like, so far, you know, they have discovered some interesting, you know, things that they've been able to do. Ultimately, most of their focus is has been on crafting. That's most of what they do. They start off making potions, and they're, good, they're doing a bit of smithing, like making rings and stuff, and... I, I do find it kind of funny that the only... that the one weapon skill they picked at the beginning uh, was the bow. And apparently, no one uses the bow in that game because it sucks. Just like it often sucks in almost any game that, you know, has that as an optional weapon. Like, well, I mean, in, if like, there's, like, guns and stuff, I could see why the bow sucks. <laughs> like, yeah, if it uh... has guns, yeah. But it's, it's ultimately... Oh, well, it sucks particularly for starting for the same reason that it sucks in Final Fantasy 2. Yes, I'm talking about Final Fantasy 2 again, but... Take your drink. this is actually an annoying thing to me, is that you have default weapons that your party starts with at the beginning of that game. And you cannot afford to buy any new weapons, or really, whatever, at the beginning of the game. You only have whatever you start with, basically. And which forces one of your characters has to be using a bow, or, like, just their fists. Spoiler alert, they're better off using just their fists at the start of the game. I mean... Yeah, something like Final Fantasy, the bow doesn't really give so much of an inherent upgrade. But in something where positioning matters? Well, like, yes. Unless there's other ranged options, the bow should still be good just for the fact of you have range. In something like Shadowrun, uh, yeah, the bow is, like, nobody ever uses a bow because everybody uses guns. <laughs> 
the impression I've gotten so far is that the bow is, like, the only, you know, like, ranged weapon, but the thing is, like, there's two main problems with it. One, well, as you might expect, uh, ammo. With other weapons, like melee weapons... They uh, don't have ammo. But in a realistic yeah, sense, about... swords would, like, degrade over time, but in a video game... You often don't have to worry about swords degrading, so they can just be used infinitely, whereas a bow requires an arrow for every use. Yes, although Final Fantasy 2 doesn't have that issue, but often, basically, if it's an MMO setting, pretty much you can guarantee you're going to need to worry about arrows. Um, well, maybe not even necessarily just MMO, but in more modern fantasy games, you generally have to worry about, you know, your ammo, especially for a bow. Um... But in addition to that, and this is the issue that is present in Final Fantasy 2, is that the only way you skill up is by successfully using your skill. And you know what the big drawback with the bow is, both in Final Fantasy 2 and with the game in which this manga is? It The bow is slow. Or inaccurate. Mm, the bow is inaccurate. Meaning, most of the time, especially at the be at the early levels, you are going to be missing most of the time. Yeah, you spend you all of your money no on arrows and maybe getting one hit, but you can't even level it up. And you need the rest of the team using swords to keep grinding money so you can continue buying arrows over and over and over again to maybe eventually level up to bow two. So it's a massive money sink in this super early game. And by the mid-game, why start leveling up bow in the mid-game? And the late game, you have something else to use. Don't start with a new skill. So there's exactly. no point in the game where it's actually beneficial to try to spend uh, the money and time to try to level up bow. Because it's like, it's either too much money or just too much flat-out time to bother with doing it. No matter where you are in the game. Now, another thing that the, that they did, or like one of the skills that they took, that uh, that again, ever like again, is another one that people think, yeah, it's really not that great. But like even from the start, uh, I knew, yeah, that's what is they're this literally skill? just saying that just to make it seem worse, like to the reader, because it's what is that, like, hawk's eye or something like that, where it's just like. Like, you can tell, like, already from it, that's, I mean, especially if someone's going with bow, that would make sense as a thing to pair with it. Um, except, it's funny you how know, you're talking about how bow is, like, so bad and stuff. It's like, one of my characters actually flat out, like, uses a bow <laughs> as her main weapon. And not just uses a bow, but loves her bow so much that the character named herself after the bow. She named herself Bo? No, she named herself Yumi, which is the style of Bo that she prefers to use. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then, like, she goes into, like... Oh. The Hawk Eye skill, which something something lets you see long distances and everybody says it's bad. That was what you were talking about, yes? Yeah. And everybody says it's bad. It's like, why would you have to worry about something way over there? You should just worry about what's right here in front of you. Basically, as far as everyone could, as far as everyone was aware, all it seemed to be was just, yeah, it wasn't even like, ooh, like special extra senses or anything like that, or being more aware of your surroundings. It's just basically... Eh, like, like having a slightly better prescription of glasses. 
Except, as was discovered a little later on, is that using it with certain other things, they realized what the actual effect was. Is that... Because uh, cer uh, certain other skills are supposed to only have a specific... Like, like even after you skill them up, are only supposed to have like a radius range of like two meters around the caster. Except, you know, the character is able to do it from basically any distance. So long as they could see their target. Yeah, the Hawk's Eye skill is actually a targeting skill. If you can see your target, yeah, you can forget about the range of your ability. Because it's just whatever you can specifically see. And it's just like, wow. That obviously is OP. Well, maybe not so much OP, but it's just like, how is it that nobody figured that out? Yeah, honestly, Although people I think would... Real gamers would figure that out really fast. It's like, huh, this thing seems like it doesn't do much, so I'm going to test it with every other skill in the game to see what it can actually do. <laughs> yeah. And the, and it's the like when... Like, uh... one, of the, one of the explicit things in the story is that yeah, it's not too long after, like, the beta test of the game, and even the beta testers didn't want to bother with it, you know, after seeing its initial usefulness. I'm just reminded of when... I think it's still the most recent. When that Five Nights at Freddy's, the Pizzeria, Walking Around 3D, whatever game came out, and people had already beaten the game, like, an hour after release... And people were talking about how they, like, 100%ed the game, like, within three hours. Like, there are already videos, like, Let's Plays, full game Let's Plays of the, of the game, like, an hour after it came out. <laughs> and I it's mean, like... I, I mean, you can guarantee that what happened there is, you know... They got a free copy. copies for were given to specific YouTubers. Yeah, which would mean that they were, like, beta testers. <laughs> yeah, sort of, yeah. But, yeah. Like, but, uh, it felt yeah, like it, an hour after the game came out, it was already old news. Also, speaking of, like, full dive and stuff, so I'm imagining... Something like this is full dive VR because that's how those animes tend to do it. Yep. If someone has a vision issue and they go into full dive, will it fix their vision for them? Good question. I'm pretty sure in every single, you know, thing that we've seen that's like been a full dive game anime. Uh, there have still been people wearing glasses, but it's hard to say whether that's just their, that's just like a style choice, or if they still need it. <laughs> and then it's like, beyond that, if somebody is blind but then goes into VR full dive, would it give them a sense of sight? Because, supposedly, at least with the SAO... The way it was written for the full dive was that it, like, basically hacks into your brain and, like, takes over uh, control of what, what your brain wants to send to, like, your body and feeds it back false information about, like, you know, the world it wants to show. So, and you're in the SAO full dive and you go, like, oh, I'd like to raise my left arm up over my head. Instead of your real left arm raising over your head, it sends the signal to the game and sends the video game virtual left arm over your virtual head. And then it sends a message, like, to your brain. It's like, yep, this is the feeling of having, like, your arm over your head. You could, s it's like, yep, you could see your arm going in front of your face. Okay, I, I don't know if that's ever been explicitly, this has ever been explicitly stated within one of these shows, but I, I'm pretty sure, like, I do know, you know, some stuff about with 
you know, people being, like, say, blind or deaf and all that. Um, I'm pretty sure it depends on the nature of what is, you know, has made them be blind or deaf or anything like that. If they have been fully blind from birth, then it is likely that they're, they simply are not capable of experiencing or understanding something visually. Because I know I've seen at least one case of someone using, like, full dive VR when they were handicapped, and then they were able to, like, walk and run around and stuff in VR. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can think of a couple of, uh, yeah, shows and stuff that have done that. But, yeah, I'm pretty sure ultimately... Spy Kids 3D? <laughs> huh? Spy Kids 3D? I, I I don't know that one. Um, anyways. Um, but yeah, I, I would say, I would hazard to guess that anyone who has... First of all, anyone, who, if they have had, you know, sight or hearing or whatever up to a certain point in their life, and, you know, then, you know, went blind or deaf, whether fully or partially... I would imagine that you know the, that the full dive would make it capable for them to experience that again in, s in similar ways that you know someone who can at least is capable of understanding what it feels like to walk around would be able to like walk around and stuff you know in VR. But if someone is say. Literally if somebody's brain cannot receive signals from their eyes and interpret it as sight, then it wouldn't matter if the headset is sending signals to the part of the brain that's supposed to determine sight. But if a person's issue was that there's something messed up with their eyes and their eyes don't send signals, then having something else virtually send signals to their brain should work. So it all depends on... It depends on what has caused it, how long it's been going on in their life, because, like, even if there is nothing wrong with, with them on the brain side of it, and it's just, I don't know, something is just wrong with their physical eyes, they've also literally never seen before, in, in, like, for that circumstance. I'm pretty sure that there have been cases with people who were flat out blind from birth, were like given an eye transplant or something and were actually able to go from being blind at birth to being able to see. And how long did it take them to adapt to their brain to adapt to actually even understanding what the hell it's processing? Heck if I know. I just saw the headline. Because, because the thing is like because you know like with babies sure they're able to see you have to see a lot around them. Huh? They're Speaking only of capable babies. of like actually focusing on and like interpreting what's basically right in front of them. I mean, still better than nothing. Speaking of babies seeing stuff, I remember reading a thing once where like a baby's like first few days of life, everything to them is upside down because that's how the eyes send signals to the brain. Mm -hmm. I I could believe that. I because I... like the eyes send an upside down signal of what you see to the brain, and then after a few days, the brain realizes, oh, I should just flip the image, and it corrects it. But also, imagine somebody working on like you know this VR stuff and sending a signal directly to the brain, and they just forget to artificially flip the image so people go into VR and everything's upside down <laughs> and somehow somehow that makes it past like quality check so you have 10,000 people playing this game and everything is upside down <laughs> brought to you by Bethesda 
No, 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 no. See, with Bethesda, it wouldn't be upside down. Uh, it would be tilted 87 degrees sideways uh, and stuck in the wall. Oh, wait, never mind, it's jittering. And it's gone. And oh, now it it's somehow gone. over the horizon. God. It's really telling when some uh, Bethesda game speedruns are... Uh, get your character to clip slightly into an object and have the game throw you to your destination. I think flying horses are a favorite in Skyrim speedrunning. I still remember when Skyrim came out and it was like this revolutionary thing because like you could be walking around, drop an item from your inventory and someone would walk up, pick up the item and give it to you like, hey, you dropped this. And that was like revolutionary at the time, you know, 13 years ago. And how ever since then we uh, haven't gotten an actual like Elder Scrolls 6. Even though it's supposed to be out any year now. Or how we still haven't gotten more news from uh, Fable 4 other than seeing the trailer. And they say they're, they say that uh, Grand Theft Auto 6 is supposed to be coming out soon-ish. Good luck with that. GTA 5 is so flippin' old, I bought a copy at a yard sale for $2.00. Like, ten years ago. <laughs> uh, for what console? Uh, Xbox 360. Because that was the newest console at the time. I think. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure the Xbox One wasn't even out at that point. Uh, yeah, I... Yeah. It was... The game is so old, it was already old by the time the last generation of consoles came out. You remember back when we used to have, like, sequels for games, and they would, like, at the very least, like, line up with, like, the new season of consoles? So it's like, oh, hey, PS2 is out, now we get a new thing, like this game. PS3 is out, now we get another one. Uh, was it Two Worlds 3 was supposed to be out, like five or six years ago. Two Worlds 2, really solid game, actually, like, authentically. Like, especially that magic system in that game. Like, actually really something worth uh, hyping up. But it definitely has some uh, tells for being an old game. I still remember way back in the game, way back in the game, way back in the day, playing that game, and people would use cheat codes in multiplayer, maybe not cheat codes, whatever, they'd use cheats in multiplayer all the time, cheats, hacks, like, normally the max level you could reach would be like 100, there'd be like level 99999 or something, like... <laughs> Like, maybe when you're a high level, you can have a spell that summons, like, three obelisks for take up, like, all of your mana. They would just have a spell that summons, like, 27 obelisks, and that would use up, like, no mana. <laughs> Relatively speaking, like... Yeah, I still remember getting put in PvP against one of these cheaters. And I somehow won! <laughs> I'm not entirely sure how I did it. I think I just kept, like, making summons or something. And hiding behind obelisks so he couldn't attack me. And eventually he, like, died. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'll take that win. Yeah, uh, Bioshock 4 was supposed to come out. Uh, Two Worlds 3. Fable 4. Half-Life 3. Elder Scrolls 6. Here's a... Yeah? If Beat Saber is so good, where's Beat Saber 2? 
Uh, it's so good it doesn't need a sequel. I remember people said the same thing about Little Big Planet, actually. That game where creativity ruled everything, basically. And it's like, what could they possibly do? It's like, I still remember back before, because like, they actually had like an update to add like the Paintinator, where you could like shoot like paintball bullets and stuff. And I think that they, yeah, they later had an update that you could put like water into the game. That was pretty cool. I still remember back like before they added those, and people were like, what would they possibly do for Little Big Planet Two that they couldn't just like upgrade Little Big Planet One? And then I checked out Little Big Planet Two, and they basically doubled the stuff you could do in the game. <laughs> and it's like, oh, you can do so 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 much more. Little Big Planet 3 came out, and they had, like, a few extra things, whatever, and then, like... And then the community kind of just died. But I played so much Little Big Planet, like... Mostly playing just online multiplayer and stuff, and... People got so flipping creative. That's another game I want to go back to sometime. I want to play Little Big Planet and go through all of those, like... Top, like, online multiplayer whatever all those top online maps and try playing through those with the group because a lot of those were really really well made and even though you had i think yeah even though you had so many more tools in little big planet 2 and 3 people had spent all their creativity in little big planet so they didn't want to make better levels for 2 and 3 and i think the same thing happened between halo 3 and reach with reach you could make better levels but people already spent all of their creativity in Halo 3. <laughs> anyway, I think it's about time to end off this here episode. I hope that you've all enjoyed. Whew. Rawr! Uh, and now I'm dreading this, but it's time for another tutorial.